On today's show, Domingo Herman outduels Max Scherzer, just like everyone expected. Aaron Judge finally ends his homerless streak. Andrew Benintendi is becoming the player that we all used to despise when he was on the Red Sox. He's finally doing that for the Yankees, which is nice. We'll preview tonight's Subway Series matchup and Jordan Montgomery is having a hell of a time in St. Louis in a good way. And we'll discuss that all next on Locked on Yankees. You are Locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Tuesday, Yankee fans, and it is a happy Tuesday. The Yankees have won two in a row, and they beat Max Scherzer. It's a miracle. Welcome to Locked on Yankees. I'm your host, Stacey Gotsoulias. I used to be a baseball writer. Now I'm a podcast host. Seems like a natural progression. Thank you for making Locked on Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including Odyssey, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Please like and comment hit the bell so you know when our videos go live and i'm thinking of doing a live show on friday before the game because yankees are on the west coast and i was thinking maybe 7 p.m or 8 p.m on friday night which is kind of a rare thing to do for us on locked on but i thought it could be fun to do a live youtube show you could ask questions we can have a discussion so let me know in the comments if you think this is a good idea plus friday is my birthday and it would be kind of cool to celebrate it with my audience so yeah let me know what you think about that so the yankees beat max scherzer last night now i will say this i actually had a good feeling most of the day And it was very uncomfortable, you know, for me, when I have a good feeling, I always feel like it's going to go away and a bad feeling will come along. But it just felt like one of those reverse locks where you look at a matchup and you think to yourself, it's possible the Yankees can win this. Stranger things have happened because I know everyone likes to make fun of John Sterling for the you can't predict baseball line, but it's true there are a lot of cases where you can't predict baseball and this was one of them this was one of them i mean i thought it was great obviously because after losing the first two in city field and the yankees doing as poorly as they've been doing the last uh month (laughs) even after winning on sunday against the blue jays Feelings weren't great heading into the Subway Series and not looking at a a potential Max Scherzer start. Max Scherzer is incredible. And yeah, the Yankees were able to get to him. Just, I'm still in shock. And Domingo Herman held his own. Did a really nice job. Honestly, and I keep saying this, since his bad start in Houston, he's been doing well. And outside of Frankie Montas, You know, the starting rotation has been fine. We'll talk about him in segment three because he's starting tonight. And, uh, or will that be segment two? We'll see how things go. (laughs) We'll see how things go. But we are going to talk about Frankie Montas and some numbers that came up today. And, yeah, so Herman's doing fine. He's doing fine. And, as I said, the Houston start, yes, bumpy. It was his first start back. It was his first start of the season. I still, to this day, don't know why the Yankees even thought to have him start in Houston when they could have had someone else do it. And uh, it was just a silly decision, but there have been plenty of silly decisions by the Yankees this season. So the final line for Herman, six and one-third innings, two runs, one of them earned, four hits, three strikeouts, Gave up the home run to Vogelbach. Vogelbach? Vogelbach. I'm, I'm saying his name wrong. I apologize. I just, that guy is unbelievable. He looks like a Lego man. His body type. I know I always say that Alejandro Kirk looks like, or is built like a, a fire hydrant. <laughs> Daniel Vogelbach? Bach? 
sorry, is built like a Lego man. Runs like the wind though. It's amazing. I can't run that fast. So good for him. Now, the one thing I will say here, the Mets only had one runner in scoring position and they were 0 for 1. The Yankees were 2 for 6. Left 6 on base. Not too terrible considering <laughs> how they've been. But let's give it up for Herman. No walks in his line either. Struck out 3. You know, not overly dominating, but pitched well enough to win. Max Scherzer, 6 and 2 third innings, 4 runs on 7 hits, 1 walk three strikeouts, gave up Judge's 47th home run. Everyone can stop panicking now. Aaron Judge hit a home run. I know he went nine games <gasps> without hitting a home run and everyone was panicked. <laughs> you knew he was going to turn it around. And it, I liked his home run last night. Oppo, you know, laser off Max Scherzer. Pretty cool. I have to say pretty cool. And... You know, it wasn't just Judge and Benintendi doing things. You know, Rizzo had a hit off of Scherzer as well. And actually, you know what? Top of the lineup. Let's talk about it. Benintendi, two and, two, two and three. Two, four, three. That's how you do it. Judge, two for four. Rizzo, one for four. LeMahieu, one for three. And Kiner Falefa, two for three. He was involved there, too. Hit a double. Benintendi hit that double. And... The similarity that cracked me up, and I said this in my post-game video, in case you didn't watch. I'm not surprised if you didn't. I put it up pretty late last night. I thought it was funny that... Now, the, the Mets didn't tie the game in the seventh, but it was very similar to Sunday when the Jays tied that game in the top of the seventh and the Yankees answered right away in the bottom of the seventh with Benintendi's home run. Last night, the Mets pulled to within one... And Benintendi drove in IKF. And the Yanks went up 4-2 again. And they won 4-2. And how did they win 4-2 after that? We're going to talk about that in segment two. Can I say two a few more times? Maybe. But first, as you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hiring hashtag frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks again for making Locked on Yankees your first listen every day. Subscribe now to Locked on Yankees on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you get notified when each episode premieres. So I'm enjoying the Andrew Benintendi becoming a pain in the butt for other team thing that, you know, he did for, or other teams thing that he did for the Red Sox. He's doing it now for the Yankees and he's picked things up a lot. He's hitting more, he's striking out less, and he's looking like the player that the Yankees traded for. So, hey, something's working for the Yankees. Do not take him out of the leadoff spot, Aaron, I almost said Aaron Judge, Aaron Boone. And I'm recording this, it's 327 right now, and the lineup may go up while I'm recording, and I will check to see what it looks like. But I am liking this whole Benintendi judge order at the top. It works. It works well. And Isaiah Kiner Falefa, he's working out well in the eighth spot, but I actually wouldn't be surprised if they put him in the ninth spot, because if he can get on base, Benintendi can probably do something with that. So. Hopefully, that'll work well. Now, the other reason why the Yankees were able to win 4-2, after Herman was done with his night, 
Ron Marinaccio came in to pitch one and one-third inning. He walked a batter, struck out a batter, and Jonathan Loisaga, one and one-third innings, had one strikeout but did really well. Got his first save of the season. Good for him. You know, considering how this season had gone for him so far, last night was a good performance by him. And I know some people were questioning Boone for leaving him in or even putting him in in that situation, but it worked out and he looked a lot better. And if Jonathan Loisaga can straighten himself out down the stretch, that is a big boost for the bullpen that needs a big boost right now. You know, the Yankees' problems lately, it hasn't really been the pitching. It's been the offense. And, you know, eight runs in two days. It's a miracle after all those uh, shutouts that they've had the past two weeks and, you know, barely scoring runs. And so I'll take four every night as long as they keep the other team from scoring more than four. Good job, guys. Now, speaking of tonight... Let's preview that matchup very quickly. Won't go too far in depth, but let's just see if maybe the lineups are out yet. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. That works. Yankees lineup is out. Benintendi, LeMayhew, Judge, Rizzo, Torres, Donaldson, Cabrera, Kiner Falefa, and Higashioka is catching Frankie Montas. Mets lineup is not out yet. So for the Mets, Taiwan Walker is pitching. He's 10-3 and three with a 3.36 ERA, 85 strikeouts on the year. Montas is 4-10 and 10 with a 3.87 ERA, 117 strikeouts. Now, the thing I wanted to discuss with Montas, this came out this morning. I saw this on Twitter. It says, Montas's pitch usage has been curious since coming over to the Yankees. While known for a deadly slider and splitter combo, he's thrown both his fastballs, both of his fastballs a lot more, meaning four-seamer and two-seamer. With Oakland, he threw 49.9% fastballs, 26% splitters, 15.7% sliders, 9.1% cutter. Okay. With the Yankees, 61.1% fastballs, 19.7% splitter, only 8 point, no, excuse me, 9.8% on the slider and 9.4% on the cutter. And as I said, he's really been the only hole in the rotation lately because despite the Yankees not really winning a lot, the Yankee starters not named Montas have a 3.09 ERA since August 5th. So he needs to turn things around, but I don't understand the difference, like why the Yankees are making him do that. Because I'm pretty sure we saw him using his slider against the Red Sox when everyone was panicking about him giving up two runs in five innings. So yeah, you know, this. I don't want this to feel like a Sonny Gray issue again, where... They make someone change their repertoire and screw them up because that's what they did with Sonny Gray. And that was a Larry Rothschild thing. And I don't want to see that again. So I don't know why they would do this with Montas, but that could be part of the reason why he's not doing as well. So we'll see what happens tonight. And as for the matchups, how the, lineups do or how the players do against each pitcher you know I'm actually shocked that Marwin Gonzalez isn't in the lineup because according to this well all right 19 at bats he's only batting 211 but he has two home runs and five runs batted in against Walker Josh Donaldson has a home run Aaron Hicks has a home run Higashioka has a home run Judge has three home runs against Walker Rizzo has a home run. Doesn't do well against him, though. In 13 at-bats, he's only batting 154. And Judge, 333. That's only nine at-bats, but he has three home runs and nine at-bats. <laughs> That's... Wait, can I do math? The only hits he's gotten are home runs against him? That's kind of amazing. Okay. Against Montas... 
former teammate Mark Hanna has only faced him once. He hasn't gotten a hit. Francisco Lindor in nine at-bats is batting 444 with no home runs. No Mets have home runs against Montas, and not a lot of them have faced him. So there's something to look for. Oh, speaking of Lindor, um, Anthony Rizzo last night, a little testy. <laughs> telling Lindor to shut the F up, which I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh, Yankees are fired up again like they were against the Blue Jays. Thankfully, nothing happened, but, you know, it's, uh, I think Rizzo is kind of frustrated with how he's been playing lately, although he did get, you know, he was fine last night. He had that hit, but um, I just found that slightly amusing that he um, said what he said against Lindor, but Lindor opens his mouth sometimes, and sometimes people need to tell him to shut the hell up. Rizzo on the year is batting 221, and there was a stat from last night from Marley Rivera of ESPN that I want to find, and I should have bookmarked this. I completely forgot. And I even said last night, I said, I should bookmark this so I can mention it on the show. And did I? No. But I'll find it. Oh, and by the way, Luis Severino was throwing live batting practice to Giancarlo Stanton. Giancarlo Stanton was also doing workouts at the stadium today. They are aiming for Thursday activation against Oakland, which I said yesterday, but that definitely looks like what's going to happen. Oh, and speaking of Ron Marinaccio, I forgot about this stat. He is not allowed to hit in 22 of his first 27 games, the most such games by any major league pitcher through his first 27 career appearances. That is pretty good. Oh, Anthony Rizzo is now hitting 163, which is 8 for 49, with 19 strikeouts and only two runs batted in in his last 13 games, including tonight. The back could probably have something to do with it. I wouldn't be surprised. Josh Donaldson hitting 146, which is 6 for 41, with 16 strikeouts and four runs batted in in his 11, past 11 games, including tonight. Those four runs batted in being the walk-off Grand Slam. So... Yeah, some guys are having trouble hitting, but as I said, Andrew Benintendi at the top of the lineup. Thank you, Aaron Boone, for not changing anything and making sure that he's still there. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about Jordan Montgomery. Let's talk about Jordan Montgomery. Oh, last night, a one nothing shutout against the Cubs. So... While he's pitching really well for the Cardinals, they're not exactly scoring for him, which is hilarious because no one likes to score for Jordan Montgomery. But, yeah. So this is from Baseball Reference. Yesterday, Jordan Montgomery became just the 10th pitcher this century with a game of nine innings pitched, at most one base runner allowed, and less than 100 pitches shown. Shown. Thrown. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, why? Why did you trade him away? Why? I I still don't understand this. I don't. Some people understand it. I don't understand it. I, I just, not for an outfielder in a boot. Why didn't you trade him for another pitcher? I'm like, what? And good for Jordan Montgomery. I'm happy for him. He's getting his time to shine, and he's doing really well. And not only that stat, but I believe his ERA, since he went over to the Cardinals, is 0.35. I believe Jeff Passan tweeted that out this morning. I will double-check this. But there was a list of guys, you know, since the trade deadline, this is how these guys are doing. And it's like, Yankee fans are like, yeah, great. That's, that's really great. Oh, the other thing that Jeff Passan tweeted earlier that everyone was freaking out about. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, Artie Moreno put out the word that they may be exploring selling the Angels. I know that Angels fans are very excited about this prospect because imagine having two of the best players in at least a generation on your team and your team not doing anything. Mike Trout has how many postseason at bats? How many times do you see the Angels on national TV? You hear about Shohei Otani and his incredible feats 
that he does during games, but you never see it because they're never on national TV because the angels are never good. No national outlet is going to want to put them on if they're not doing well. You're always hearing about, you know, the angels hit seven solo home runs in the game and lost eight, seven, you know, Shohei Itani drives in eight runs, but they want, they lost 11, eight, you know, <laughs> like that sort of a thing. So I joked on Twitter that we should all pitch in and buy the angels and, you know, try to run a baseball team, but I wouldn't know the first thing about that. Okay, this is Passon's tweet. In the three weeks since the trade deadline, the top 10 in Major League Baseball in ERA, minimum of 20 innings. Edward Cabrera doesn't have an ERA. He said 0.00. Jordan Montgomery, 0.35. Chris Bassett, 0.69. Julio Urias, uh, 0 0.75, Justin Steele, 0 0.79, Zach Gallen, 1, Drew Smiley, 1.13, Christian Javier, 1.50, Drew Rasmussen, 1.57, and Jeffrey Springs, 1.66. Yankees have seen a few of those guys, not a couple of them since the trade deadline and, uh, Javier before. Yeah, um... Was Edward Cabrera the one that the Yankees thought they were going to trade for? Or was that someone else? Wait a minute. No, wasn't it him? Oh, my God. Yeah, good job. Good job, Yanks. Oh, boy. But again, good for Jordan Montgomery. I'm honestly happy for him. I really am. And they said that the players stayed behind in the clubhouse and watched him pitch last night. Once the game was over, they're still rooting for him. They're still in shock that he was traded. And I still think that, God, that's just bad juju. It really is. I, I don't appreciate what Brian Cashman did. Speaking of Brian Cashman, he spoke with the media yesterday and spoke about the spectacular Yankee team that he thinks can still win the World Series. Someone please get me whatever Brian Cashman is smoking and send it to me for my birthday on Friday. Could you? Because I want to feel as good as Brian Cashman does right now. Has he not been watching this team the past month and a half and especially the past two weeks? What is going on? I know he can't come out and say, yeah, my team sucks. No one expects him to say that, but at least be real. Come on. Come on. Stop. Stop the madness. Stop it. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I needed to discuss with you about the Yankees. Um, oh, they are thinking about bringing Scranton's closer up, I believe is what I saw earlier, for more bullpen help. Um, and as I said, you know, Severino is working his way back. Stanton's working his way back. Britton is working his way back. Clay Holmes is okay. There was an update about him. I saw that earlier. Let me double check that. I just want to make sure that I get the info right because God forbid I don't. I spelled it Holmes like home. Maybe I should put Clay Holmes in there, right? Clay Holmes. That would work as a search. So how's everyone doing today? Is everyone doing okay today? Can you believe it's Tuesday and can you believe that um, oh, here we go. Clay Holmes said he felt good after throwing 15 pitches on Sunday. We'll get on the mound again today. And he expects to be on the trip West Coast. Because as I told you guys, Oakland for four. And then the Angels, who I was just talking about. Oh, all right. See, it's funny. I was looking at Christy Ackert's tweet. And then it says that Sweeney Murdy tweeted that Stanton will be activated Thursday and Holmes will possibly be activated for the first game in Anaheim on Monday. So you'll see those two on the West Coast. Holmes will be with them, obviously, and then he'll be activated. There you go. And how are we feeling about tonight? I don't know how to feel about tonight. I really don't. I, I would really like for Montas to do better. From what I was reading about those numbers, I don't like that the Yankees are tweaking his pitching arsenal and I think that he should stick with what was working for him and I don't understand why they're not so um look for that tonight when you're watching the game now that you know the numbers and how they've skewed and how they've 
changed where he's throwing more fastballs instead of the slider. Um, look out for that. I will look out for that. And then we'll discuss it on tomorrow's show along with recapping the game. And, you know, tomorrow's an off day, obviously, because they have to travel out to the West Coast. Thank goodness MLB doesn't do that to them. And then on Thursday, we'll preview the series against Oakland. So, yeah, that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to remind you that you can listen to this show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, like and comment on YouTube and click the bell notification so you know when our videos go up. And if you're looking for something else to listen to after you listen to us, why not listen to Locked On MLB? Make your second listen of the day the Locked On MLB podcast. Podcast. Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories from around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. So enjoy your Tuesday. Go Yankees, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Thank you.